George Carl. I found this while searching for oh, information. George, on... George Carl is one of my cigar. Is he uh, really? Con contributors, yes. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, I'm glad he. Good guy. I'm good glad guy. I picked his question. And I always show respect when you say his name. Yes. Uh, frequent contributor of questions as well. He usually comes up with some good ones. I found this while searching for information on Big Bully Busick. First, he sent us a link. I'll tell you what the link is in a minute. But first, Dutch, do you know anything about Mr. Busick? Big Bully Busick, briefly in WWF in the late 80s or early 90s. I never met the guy. I never heard anything about him till he showed up in WWF. Or mm -hmm. he... I think we're talking around 91, maybe? Something like oh, that. Oh, yeah, WWF. Never heard anything about him at all. I liked the name, and he was the one that had the cigar, right? Yes. And the hat and the big mustache. Yep. Okay, Carl, I just got to ask you, did you did you send that question in because of the cigar, because of the hat, or because of the mustache? The camera See? has recoiled in fear at your mustache back again now. Oh, yeah. So I, don't, just... I, don't know, I don't know why this is. Oh, we, we've retired. We'll have to get another camera at one point. Uh, okay, I'm just looking at, he was in Atlanta Police. He began wrestling for Jerry Blackwell in Atlanta yeah. and developed the bully yeah. persona. And then he went to Global in 91, then WWF. And then he really didn't wrestle very much. Anyway, George Carl has sent in a, an article from WWE.com from 2012. And it is the top 10 superstar mustaches of all time. And you're not well, on it. No, that's because before I really, I, I had a little one then. But it was still better than some of them they had. Oh, God, read, yeah. Re read some of them. Well, uh, why don't we not read them? Why don't we look at them ourselves? One second. Uh, go ahead and look at them so I can knock the shit out of it. <laughs> it okay, okay, yeah, I'm recording again now. So you just denied that that was even Caitlin. So I don't yeah, remember I Caitlin. Do you remember Caitlin was, from WWE? Well, of course. Why would I say I remembered her if I didn't remember her? Well, you didn't say you remembered her. You just went, is that Caitlin? That's what I'm saying. Is that Caitlin? Because I remembered her. Yes, apparently. So. I think this was after she had she had already left the uh, WWE and she had lost weight. She was heavier than when I saw. No, no, no. She no, she was involved at this time. I don't think she left till 2014. So anyway, this is Caitlin's top ten superstar mustache. So you're calling you you calling me a liar? Uh, yes. Okay. So uh, this is Caitlin's. Uh, Top 10 mustaches. Now, this was in late 2012. This was written, and you were not involved with WWE at that time. No. So uh, I think you fell by the wayside, where really you deserve a good one or a uh, spot of one or two at least. Number 10, Jake Roberts. And they've gone for the sort of slight handlebar version that he had in the mid 80s. Generic. Not a Magnum uh, PI kind of thing there. Not as good. No, it doesn't have the raw. Magnum TI, TA. He had part of the, the royalty about him. You know, the, and he was a takeoff on another Magnum character with a mustache. But, yeah, PI, yeah. And Jake's mustache is okay, but it was generic. Pretty solid, though, for a start. R ravishing Rick Rude. Iconic, if nothing else. Yes, it was. I, I like that. He just had the top, the top mustache, and he had a top lip that it fit. See, if you had a different type lip, it wouldn't fit. See, a lot of people don't know this about mustaches, but, you know, actually I have an underbite. So actually when I grew the mustache, it was to kind of cover that up. And I've had it all, it, I, I grew it when I started wrestling about a year or two. I started growing the mustache and that was to cover the underbite or the overbite, which one it is. But very good mustache. I would give that, uh, an eight. Ah, right. Well, we're rating. So eight for Rick, uh, Jake. Uh, he, he gets about seven and a half. Eight. Seven it's, good. it's good. Have you ever seen Rick Rude without a mustache? It doesn't look right. No, I've seen him without the mustache. When I first met him, he didn't have the mustache. Yeah, it doesn't look right on him. But you know, Rick Rude, I got to, when, when I first met him in Memphis, I got to talking to some people about him. Hell, I didn't know it. He's one of the toughest son of a bitches they were. Hmm? Oh, he was, he was, and he used to be friends with all the Minnesota crowd, uh, the Road Warriors, uh, the uh, Kurt Hennig, Scott Norton. Yeah, he was friends yeah. with all them, and they all ran around together. But 
one guy that was telling me, he says, the neither one of the road warriors would mess with him hmm. because what he had, he had like a, just a punch. And when he straightened that punch out on you, you could forget it. So, and apparently he was the, the roughest, toughest one of all of them. So they all steered clear of, uh, uh, Mr. Rick rude. Mm -hmm. So, no, and, I, and I was, and I was, when he came to Memphis, he was greener than grass and through, you know, a little work and I had a lot of matches with him. He wasn't stiff, but he wasn't, uh, he hadn't bought into the, to the personality so much. And he didn't have the personality then, but we gave him, I gave him, a little bit of the personality then I didn't say I came up with a gimmick, but I said, you need to be a little more, uh, let your personality play more out. And he started doing it. And eventually his crowd reaction got better and it got better. And by that time, I, after about six months, uh, seven months in, in Memphis, I think that's when he went to, I don't know where he went first. If he went to, I think he went to maybe Dallas or Texas territory and then the WWE, I'm not sure. No, he was in Mid-Atlantic. He was teaming with Manny Fernandez at one point. Okay, that's right. And then okay. I think he went to and, WWF from there, maybe. Okay. Well, he had he had what was necessary to to go to these other territories. And uh, sad what happened to him, but I like Rick. Rick was a good guy and funny as hell. You should have also said that you told him to grow the mustache. Then that would have been thematically. Wait a minute. Was... He, he raced this. We're going to go back and say, and yeah, what I told him, you need to grow the mustache. Yeah. Or rewind. <laughs> you need to grow the mustache and uh, you, you'll have a hell of a you'll way be a to star. go. I, can, I, could have, I, I can compare you one day to me. <laughs> Unfavorably. <it's laughs> uh, next one, number eight on this list is Magnum TA. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, Magnum TA. Mm -hmm. that, that actually fits him well. Quite See, baby the, face there as well, isn't he? Oh yeah, he was, but he had a he had that sandy blonde hair and and the, the mustache the same way. You know, the last time I saw Magnum T. A. he it was at a convention in Charlotte, I think, and he was on his what I call his motorized machine, mm -hmm. and it's pretty big. I mean, this thing is bigger than like a, a motorized wheelchair. He can actually sit up tall in it. And uh, so when he talks to people, you know, he's he's about to, not the same height he was, but pretty close. And I've never seen any, it's got to be expensive. Because this almost has to be tailor-made because it's a, uh, has, has four wheels and he can sit up in it way high and, you know, move it around. So, and he remembered me and he come up, he come to my table. He said, Hey man, what's going on? And, you know, and th the fact that he remembered me from the Carolinas was, it actually made me feel good. He come up and oh, we talked about 15 minutes. And he said, well, I got to get back to my table. I got to sell some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so so and he and he was a good guy really good guy and drew a ton of money in charlotte and guess who he drew a ton of money with the on cheek rick flair yeah, of course of course yeah rick's got to be in there somewhere yeah. the, well the eternally mustacheless rick flair oh yeah oh yeah now this here oh the shiki baby <laughs> it's too much <laughs> Chick is a he, he's too much. He almost got me killed in a bar one night. So mm -hmm. I had to get oh, we, him and we told that story, and, yeah. Him and Sid. So ever since that time, and I still have a story that I haven't told about him that I don't know whether to tell or not, which I think I won't tell. Uh you don't even know it, James. Hmm. So but uh I would give that one very middle easternish. But, but the thing is, that was part of his character. Everyone else just had a mustache, but this one. And? 
Well, I mean, it's, I mean, it's still that... Middle Easternish. No, I know that. I'm saying, does he get extra points because the mustache is part of his whole present, integral to his presentation? In fact, no. All right, rank him. Uh, I give him. A, I get on well, that one. This it takes a lot of care to do that. I give him a seven. We didn't do Magnum. Give that a rank. Oh, I, I'd give a seven five. Okay, so around Jake Roberts is in. Next one, Mean Gene Oakland. Look at oh, that. Oh, please, man. This is like, Gene, you're like 19, <laughs> 1960. Uh, what's that guy's name? Eric? No. What's that guy's name that had the, the mustache back in those days? He's a movie star. What was his name? Errol Flynn. Errol Flynn. Very Errol. That's not Errol a lot of- Flynn. His was a lot thinner, wasn't it? It was a lot thinner, but I'm saying what I'm saying, James, if you'll listen right. and let me get it out for our fans that are listening. It is a, uh, it's a little thicker than Errol Flynn's Errol Flynn was, he had it shaved down and cut Errol Flynn's actually his mustache required more attention than, you, than I'm, this one I'm does. trying to look at this right. You know what shape it looks like to me? I was trying to think out exactly. Does it look like a broom? Does is, it, it look like a is, is it nasty? It looks like a coat hanger. It's got like an exact coat hanger shaped mustache, which is amazing. Well, it does. And you just run the hanger up through the nose. Mm. Yeah. Then you can hang the suits that he's wearing I'm, on it. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to give this one. And I love, I love Jane. I'm gonna give it a six. That's what I'm gonna give. I it. thought you were gonna give him less than that. So, Hulk Hogan, iconic if nothing else, the Fu Manchu. Yeah, bullshit. <laughs> I don't like the thing. He's got it coming down halfway, and you know, I never really got. To, but without that mustache, you'd have to see part of his face. So it worked work for him because. But did he ever think about turning it up at the at the bottom? Did he ever think about that? No, he didn't. So, but I'm gonna give that a I'm gonna give that a six too. Okay. Have you ever seen him Hulk Hogan with that mustache? Oh, here we go, Rick Steiner. Now, oh, years ago, I did, but he was he was a young young Terry Terry. Uh, what was his last name? But Boulder, I think he was going as at the time, Terry, wasn't he? Terry, I, I, I was going to say Terry Runnels. No, no, no he, her, her he mustache. He, no, it doesn't. Yeah, her mustache was something. Yeah. Oh, hey, now, hey, Rick Scott. Uh, I mean Scott uh, Steiner. Oh, Rick. Rick. Rick Steiner. I'll get it if it give me enough time. That's a pretty serious mustache. The connectors. Buddy. The See, connectors. This there, is, that's, that's very good. <laughs> It doesn't connect, but you know they make it seem like it. No, does, I mean, like but... like for a lot of people who grow in a mustache like that or a beard, or whatever. That's the hardest bit, isn't it? Well, you just got to get it. When you start growing it, you get your. Well, I guess most guys start growing it. They cut around what they want to, and then it just fills in. But it's dark and it's thick, and uh, I'll give that a seven five two, mm-hmm. maybe an eight. Triple H with the Lemmy style friendly mutton chops kind of thing. Pathetic. <laughs> that is not a good mustache. It, it because it makes his bottom lip look bigger. And it makes actually when you see this picture, you think of a of a movie character and he's got that damned uh hammer with him, so what the hell? Maybe he was an executor. Mm. The you call it the executor. What what would you call that? He he puts people and hangs them and hits their heads and stuff. Oh like yeah, that. I know. I, the word has dropped out of my brain. Okay, but executioner. You mean? I'm, I I give it six five. Brett would give it four out of ten. Number two, Ox Baker. Uh, uh, I'm going to give that one. What did I give uh, Rick Steiner? I think the highest you've given is an 8 out of 10. Ox Baker. I'm going to say an 8-5. Really? I thought you'd you'd be more generous on that. 
Well, I stole it from him. <laughs> and number one in this list, big bully Busick that we discussed before. Very, very impressive mustache. Let's steal. But see his face, it fits that mustache. Mm. So I'm going to give that, I got to give that an 8.5 too. Really. And if we were now, judging your now mustache. Mine, yeah, mine. It's got to be a 10 just because of the work I put in it. Absolutely. How could we say anything else, especially on the Ask Dutch Anything? Yes, absolutely. 